In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. And my guest in the studio today has patients from all over the world coming to see him to get help with vertigo. Dr. Michael Strupp from the Vertigo Center in Munich. Thank you very much for coming here today. It's my pleasure. Dr. Strupp, everyone feels dizzy from time to time. When is it a medical problem? When is it vertigo? Well, that's a very important question for the understanding of the vestibular system because vertigo and dizziness by itself are not always pathological. It's a normal sensation when you are on a merry-go-round or in a lift then you feel dizzy. It's a serious problem if it occurs spontaneously, like an attack with severe rotatory vertigo, or when it is accompanied by other symptoms like double vision or hearing problems or headache. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to make that distinction for people. We've had a viewer writing to us, Elias from Morocco. He feels dizzy when looking up suddenly. Um, he wants to know if that's vertigo or to do with blood pressure. What would you say? It might be caused by changes of blood pressure, but this is most often overestimated. If patients have really recurrent attacks of vertigo, the doctor has to look for something else. In particular, if the symptoms depend on the head or body position for a so-called benign paroxysmal positioning vertigo, the most frequent form of vertigo and dizziness. Mm -hmm. So you say that's the most frequent form. What other forms are there? Maybe can you explain what that positional vertigo means exactly? So basically there are three different forms of vertigo those which arise from the inner ear, that means the labyrinth or the vestibular nerve. And then we have central forms arising from the brainstem or the cerebellum. And very frequent in young adults, we have a psychogenic, a somatoform vertigo. That means there's a psychological reason for that or? Or not always, but the basic problem in these patients is that they permanently check their balance. And then they realize that they sway a little bit, which is physiological, but this causes some fears and then we have a spiral of self-monitoring of balance. Mm -hmm. But mainly uh, the, the uh, causes for vertigo are physical ones? Or? Yes, of course. So as I said, they may arise from the ear, for instance, small crystals within one semicircular canal in the ear leading to positioning vertigo, or we may have an inflammation of the vestibular nerve, which is characterized by an acute onset of severe rotatory vertigo or we have Meniere's disease with hearing problems, fullness of the ear or tinnitus. Mm -hmm. So there's many, many different forms. You have to get that checked out, obviously. But is vertigo something that can be cured quite well? Or As The first step is to make a precise diagnosis. And we have 10 frequent types of vertigo, like benign proxysmal vertigo, vestibular migraine, or ischemia in the brainstem. And after you have made a correct diagnosis, you can successfully treat about 80 to 90 percent, depending on the underlying disease. And to get that correct diagnosis, do you have to go and see a specialist or what kind of doctor should you be seeing if you experience spells of vertigo? So if you have recurrent problems, I think it's the best idea to first go to your general practitioner. And then the next step would be to go to a neurologist or an ear doctor. But if they do not make a correct diagnosis, then you should go to a specialist. Dr. Strupp, what's your view on neurofeedback, one form of therapy for vertigo? Yeah, that's one part of the treatment and it belongs to balance training, vestibular rehabilitation. But we have two other principles. The second one is the use of certain drugs, for instance, beta blockers in vestibular migraine or for instance, beta histine in Meniere's disease. And the third therapeutic principle is behavioral therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, in particular for patients with phobic postural vertigo. Mm -hmm. What about physiotherapy? There are two forms of physiotherapy which are applied. The first one are so-called liberatory or repositioning maneuvers for benign paroxysmal positioning vertigo. And the other one is balance training. So you mentioned uh, the positional vertigo. That's the one where the little crystals float around in your ear. How can physiotherapy help with that? You make very specific maneuvers so that you can really remove these small crystals from the affected semicircular canal and the patients are most often cured within two or three days. So you might have suffered vertigo for a long time and just by moving in a certain way 
sounds impressive. Would yep. you say that that's the most effective form of the different sets of treatment? Yes, of course. So we had patients who had this form of vertigo for 40 years and they were cured within three days, which was really amazing. Fantastic. Um, we've had a viewer writing to us, Ade Zuvitra from Indonesia. She would like to know if there's something one can do to prevent spells of vertigo in the first place. Uh, not really. So if you have an organic disease, like Meniere's disease, or if you're suffering from vestibular migraine, there are no real prophylactic measures. Uh, but on the other hand, if you do a lot of balance training and sports, you're well prepared if something happens to your vestibular system. Because your body finds it easier to... You exactly. pull it out. Exactly. So what kind of uh, exercise can, can serve as balance training? Or you can play soccer or play tennis, things like that which require movements of the head and the body. That's important. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what about exercises like just standing up on a leg or something like this? Is that useful to uh, train? Partially useful. So it's better to do active sports. Mm -hmm. Is there a group of people who is most at risk from vertigo or suffering from spells of vertigo? So the risk to suffer from vertigo and dizziness increases with aging. So that will be a real problem in the future. For instance, young adults, about 18% suffer from vertigo. If you examine patients over the age of 80, it's more than 40%. So it's a real problem of an aging population. Mm -hmm. So the problem is going to increase probably in the future. Um, in the Center for Vertigo in Munich, you also research new forms of therapy. Is there something that we can hope for that's coming up for vertigo in terms of vertigo therapy? Indeed, there is, because we run a lot of clinical trials to look for new medications which may help. And I think we might apply so-called vestibular implant for patients with bilateral lesions in about five to ten years. So that's a new therapeutic principle. So when you say vestibular implant, does that mean it's like an artificial balance organ? It's an artificial labyrinth and in animal experiments it's already working. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, thank you very much for being our guest today, Dr. Strupp. Thanks for taking the time. It was my pleasure.